Hello everyone, this is Jared with Data Medics, and welcome to my video about how to clone a hard drive with bad sectors using DD Rescue. Now this is going to be part of a multiple video series. Uh, in this first part of the series, we're going to talk about uh, setting up a Linux Live USB, uh, which if you're familiar with that, you may be able to skip the latter portion of this video, but stick with me for a few minutes because we're going to go over a few things that you need to be aware of in your initial setup. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Jared Palmer. I'm the owner of Data Medics Data Recovery Services. Uh, we're a professional data recovery lab that operates in the United States. And if you have a case that you need looked at, by all means, feel free to visit our website, datamedics.com. Uh, don't forget the hyphen in between data and medics, or just Google us, and you should find us as the first result. So uh, first, we're going to talk about setting up a live USB. Now, obligatory warning here, data that's too important to risk if you have data on a hard drive that you're trying to clone with DD Rescue, that is just too important to risk. You have your wedding photos, you have your client's data, something that just under no circumstances can you afford to lose it or can't replace it by any means. Uh, please pause for a moment and really consider, is professional recovery worth it? It might only be a few hundred dollars if you haven't messed around with it too much. Data recovery is not always thousands of dollars like many people think it is. Uh, so please, Give it some thought. If this data can't be lost, please don't attempt it yourself. Uh, failed recovery attempts by doing it yourself is a leading cause of permanent data loss that even the professionals can't recover. We see it all the time. People clone a hard drive the wrong direction or they uh, pick the wrong drive where to save the data to and they end up overwriting data in a way that there's just no possibility to get it back. So please, if you can't risk your data, don't follow this video any further. All right, so if you are seeking professional services, please feel free to visit our homepage, data-medics.com. Uh, also, if you do visit our homepage, uh, you'll find that we have a forum. Now, this video that I'm making right now is actually a follow-up to an article, a, a DIY, uh, how to clone a hard drive with bad sectors using DD Rescue that I had written some years back. It's quite a popular article, but as you can see, it's a long read, so I figured it's time to finally follow this up with a YouTube video, so that's what I'm going to have for you right now. Uh, but if you want to link to the original article that was found on our forum, please feel free to visit the link in the, uh, uh, the comments below. I'll put a link down there for you and you can go ahead and follow through with that and read the how-to and copy-paste the commands that you're going to need in Linux afterwards. So, all right, so just a few things that we should go over uh, before you start working with DD Rescue. Now, first question is why Linux versus Windows? Now, this comes down to a simple fact that all Windows imaging or cloning tools are going to be crippled by Windows. It doesn't matter how good the program is, it's no fault of the software. Windows acts as a go-between between the software layer and the actual hard drive. So no matter how good the software is, it's going to be crippled by what Windows will and won't allow it to do. Now Linux, on the other hand, which is a totally different operating system, allows for much better control of the storage device. The software can actually directly send ATA or SCSI commands to the drive. It can send things such as a software reset command, uh, things that can help to work with a drive that is struggling, such as a drive that has a number of bad sectors and will tend to hang and get stuck if you try to clone it in Windows. So please stop trying to clone in Windows. It is not going to work the same. And don't think that you can run Linux in a VM or something and that's going to resolve the problem. You, you need Linux natively running on your computer. Now, if you don't feel like installing Linux, then the way to go is through a live USB. And that's what we're going to get into in this video is how to set one of those up. And then in the next video, we're going to go over how to actually issue the DD rescue commands to clone a drive to another drive. All right, so now the next thing is SATA versus USB. Now you may be tempted to just take your hard drive and plug it in using one of those handy little USB to SATA adapters. Unfortunately, that's gonna give you the same sort of problem that you'll have if you try to clone in Windows. Uh, those bridge chips, they limit control of the hard drive to whatever command set that that little chip, that cheap bridge chip has. Unfortunately, that's gonna block the software from sending a lot of those necessary commands. So it's just not going to work as well if you're USB connected than is if you're directly SATA connected. So if there's any means possible, uh, please try to find a way to SATA connect the hard drive. That's why most often this will be easiest using a desktop computer versus a laptop. Uh, unless, of course, you have one of these USB My Passport type drives, which you see in the picture here, 
Unfortunately, these, there's no point to taking it out of the case. The USB uh, port is built right onto the drive, so unless you have the tools and expertise to know how to replace the actual PCB of the hard drive itself with one that has a SATA port, you're not going to be able to do too much more with these. Um, but fortunately, these are a little more advanced than some of the cheap adapters, so they will be able to work somewhat with DD Rescue. Not as well as if it's SATA connected, uh, but if you have no way to connect via SATA, you can certainly try using DD Rescue with this type of drive. But for anything else, by all means, please take out the USB, find a way to directly connect it to the SATA port of the motherboard. All right, so with that having been said, enough of the PowerPoint presentation. Now let's get into uh, actually setting up a USB thumb drive for use with DD Rescue. Now, if you've never set up a, th if you've set up a thumb drive in the past for use with uh, Linux as a, a live, Linux Live USB. You could probably skip the rest of this video and go to the next one. We're actually already in Linux. Uh, for this video, I'm going to recommend that we use a Debian build of Linux. Now, there's quite a few different builds of Linux that you, you can use. Uh, anything based on Debian should work exactly the same way as what I'm going to show in this tutorial. Um, but this, this is one I like. It's uh, Parrot OS. You can find it there at parrotsec.org. I'll throw a link down in the description. And if you get to this website, you can just go to the download page. You'll notice some different versions. You could use probably any of them. I personally like this one here, the Security Edition. I find that it just has a lot of utilities and tools already built into it, so it's a minimal amount of anything that we need to install. Uh, just a few command lines we'll need to run to install a few programs, but most of it's already in there, so that's why I like this Security Edition. Uh, so you go ahead and just hit Download. I've already done that, so it's sitting in my Downloads folder. And what this is going to download is just an ISO image file. It's kind of like a, a file used normally to open as a virtual disk image or a, as like a CD-ROM image file. Uh, but you need to make it bootable. So to make it bootable, what you're going to want to do is head over to this website and get this Belina Etcher. And I'm guessing that's how you say it. B-A-L-E-N-A -E dot I-O slash Etcher. And, and this is a little utility to take that ISO image and then burn it to a USB drive in a way that is bootable. So go ahead and download that and install it. Hopefully you know enough to be able to do that. And once you've downloaded and installed it and run the program, you're going to get an interface just like this. So you're going to find it's a very simple interface. Have option to flash from a file that you've already downloaded or from a URL if you have slow internet and you haven't fully downloaded the file. You want to just plug it in by the URL and have it download and burn it later. You could do that, but I already have it downloaded, so I'm just going to do from file. And there's my image file that I downloaded, Parrot Security, ISO. Go ahead and hit open. Select a target. Now, this is very important. Please make sure you only have one USB data storage device plugged into your computer. Every day we get people coming in because they cloned an image file or wrote a Linux image to the wrong hard drive. So please, please, please only plug in the one drive that you plan to write this image to, nothing else. So I already have one plugged in, so we'll go ahead and hit select target, and there's my SanDisk Cruiser that I plugged in. Now, you're going to notice that it's a 32 gigabyte drive that I have plugged in. My image is only about 4.8 gigabytes, so it's not going to take up the entire drive, but it's just, it doesn't really matter if you have extra size here. The image is going to write, and it's going to work fine either way. All right, so I just hit select, go ahead and hit flash, and it's going to sit here for a while while it writes that 4.8 gigabytes or so of data. And as this writes, we're going to go ahead and get ready for the next part. Now, for the next part, I'm going to be in Linux, so I'm going to have to pause the recording. We're going to have to switch over to Linux. Uh, now, once your USB is flashed, you're going to need to boot your computer into Linux. Unfortunately, I can't walk you through this part because the procedure is a little different depending on your computer or your laptop that you're working from. I would hope you're working from a desktop. If so, look up your specific desktop model or your motherboard model and search how to boot it from a USB thumb drive. Uh, you, usually there's a pretty simple option such as pressing F8 or F12 that will bring up the boot options menu. You can then select the boot device. On certain uh, UEFI motherboards or BIOS motherboards, you may have to disable or enable certain features such as secure boot. So just go online, Google your motherboard or your computer model name and find out how to boot it from a thumb drive. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is plug that thumb drive right in, boot it up, select that as your boot device, and then you'll be in Linux ready for the next portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and let this finish. And then we're gonna boot into Linux and we're gonna resume this video.
Thanks for watching.